I'm going to go over how to import an image and use path trace to create your own cut art. At the map designer screen, just click on path trace. And at the top, there's four tabs. You want trace and draw. And you want to load the image. If you know what size you want it to be, it would be good to import your image at that width. And I'm just going to look for my saved image. I bring it in. I have maximized my screen as opposed to having it real small. Maximize it and hit those zoom all buttons so you can see it big. And then type in what your width is. Let's say it's going to be 16 inches. And it will automatically change the height. You don't have to do that. You can change the opacity so that it's really dark to trace on it, or you can make it really light. And I've changed the size, so I'm going to hit the zoom all button again. So this is what I want to have. And I will make this circle the actual opening for my photograph. So I'm going to, most of this is pointy work. So I'm going to use my draw line tool. And it's vector based, so um, I clicked on it where I want to start my line, and then I'm just going to pull it up to where I want it to end, and then click again. And then click the top, bring it down, and click again. Click, click, and just keep doing that all the way around. You want this to be exact, you'll have to, some of these lines are kind of rounded. You could use the arc, draw arc tool to do that, but I don't care that it's rounded or straight, so I'm just going to leave it like this especially for this purpose. It's supposed to be a somewhat imperfect sun. Why did I pick a sun with so many points? For the sun, um, you can either draw an oval or an arc. If you draw the oval, it's going to, you kind of want to envision this as a rectangle or a box and know that this is the corner and that's the other point that makes the corner. And as soon as you click and start dragging, it's going to start making a circle. Um, and that's kind of the general area. And then click again and it will stop moving. Um, you want to copy the object as an option. And as soon as you um, hover over, it makes it white. Select the object to copy is what it says at the bottom. And I can click and pull it over. Um, and I can, as you can see at the bottom, it says click the new position, hold the shift key to move instead of copy. So if I don't want to copy this, I'm just trying to move it. I'm going to hold my shift key down. And as soon as I move it again, it's disappeared, the original circle. And I can just click and let go of the shift key. And there it sits. Now it's not exactly on this line over here, but it's pretty good on this left, right 
or left top and bottom. So um, on the left here, there's under the trace and draw still, it says move point. As soon as I hover over it, it shows me like where the points are that I can move. And within this section, it looks like there's just one point. So I'm going to click it and then I'm going to move it in a little. Or I can move it way out. As soon as I click again, it'll let go. So now I have my basic traced project. Um, on the prep design tab, you want to join segments on every single, um, oops, undo, good button to know, um, on every single one of these points. If you uh, go around it, you uh, hover, you can see there's a white line, white line, white line. So those are not connected. Whereas if I hover on this one, it's all white. So I'm going to close that circuit. And then I can go join segments on the next one. And all you have to do is um, click on the line, and it will automatically join each one as you go. Close the circuit. Join. Cover, make sure it turns white, and that's all one unit now, and say close the circuit, go back to join segments, and do that again on every single one of these points. Close circuit. So this is why we charge, and when you go into pass trace for a client's order, this is why we charge by the hour, or you know, depending on how long you think it took you, there's different pass trace. Uh, charges and specialty that you can do. So if you can look at the design ahead of time while you're designing with the client or know, you know what they're after, you can probably kind of gauge how long this is going to take and make sure you charge appropriately because it is time consuming to do. And the work is not done once you've got this design done. You've got to then import it into your mat design, which we will do. And then most likely there's going to be some um, template that needs to be done to make sure, you know, when it's cut that it um, matches your client's artwork. So these are going to be, um, we need to think about how we want to treat the, the sun rays, if we want them to be um, an opening cutout or a pen or a deboss. Uh, on the top there's a set bevels tab and you have all these options to uh, choose what you want to use due to the sun rays. So we could actually make them a cutout and make it a normal bevel. Or um, let's see what every other one looks like. That works. So I could do normal bevel on those, every other one. And then I could choose to do uh, either a V-groove or a pen or a deboss on every other one. So every other one's a cutout or a deboss. Whoops. Undo. 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 <laughs> And then my opening is going to be a normal bevel. And I'm going to, oh, I haven't closed this. Close my circuit, um, the circle, and make it, and you want to be able to see this little arrow. And wherever you have your cursor, and if there's an option for another, there's only one arrow on this, so I'm going to click it. Um, Wherever you have, or when you're setting your bevel, you can choose, um, for instance, this one has three options. There's an arrow at each one of these corners. And if you um, are doing a circle or an oval or a curve of some kind and you want to, wherever you click it to set your bevel is going to be where the blade plunges into the mat. So if you want it to be a really smooth transition, make sure you pick either a corner or something that has less of a curve going on it. In this case, it doesn't matter. So this is now a piece of cut art we've created. And we want to just save it 
over here on the right, save, and then you can, um, I'm just going to put it on my desktop and I'm going to name it uh, Sun um, Cutout. And I'm going to save that. So what I've done is created my own cut art, and it is only that cut art. Um, for you to be able to use it in a mat, I'm going to just minimize this. And I'm going to start a new mat design. And I'm just going to say it's maybe 8 by 10 and um, 16 by 20. Oops. <laughs> I say, OK. And I just want a single mat. And I'm actually just going to get rid of that opening. But I want a 16 by 20 for my outside. Actually, I want 20 by 20. And I go to my openings. And just like any other cut art, I'm going to say add cut art opening. And now I'm going to try to find where I saved my file. And I want my desktop. Where's my desktop? Desktop. Oh, first one. And sun cut out. There it is. Save. Bam. There it is. So my outside dimension, my outermost points are 16 by 16, roughly. So I'm just going to like center that on there and see what it looks like. So it's now a piece of cut art that you can uh, utilize for your art. When you send this to uh, the warehouse, you can design it in specialty in wizard as a mat and as long as you have your cut art with your file that you've created the warehouse can cut it so when you um, upload your mat you need to send the cut art to the warehouse because the cut art that is in the default cut art folder is global and meaning that everybody that has wizard 6.1 has access to all those cut arts, but the cut art that you just created is specific to your machine. So the warehouse will not have this in their system. So that's why you need to send the cut art and the file.